Hey everyone, Eugene here, back again. Hope you're all well. Just as I promised, here is my, um, for the most part, entire Chanel perfume collection. I may have a few bottles stored away somewhere. Um, I, I notice I'm not seeing my red limited edition number five, and I have a couple of collectibles that I didn't bother digging up, but for the past two Christmases, I shared my Guerlain perfume collection video and since that last one i've only added about two pieces so i thought for this holiday season i'm gonna instead uh share with you my chanel's um which are two of my uh favorite brands you know throw in a couple of other brands it's it's pretty much all that i'm interested in um but for the most part, you know, well before I was familiar with Guerlain in my journey, Chanel was uh, the first house that I kind of got into. And it was just because of, you know, I live in a small town and they were accessible to me without traveling out very far. And I, I got into um, some of the older masculines uh, just because of how well crafted I found them and, you know, they smelt different than a lot of uh, mainstream men's designers, which I've never really kind of um, fell for or appreciated. Um, I just really found them bland and boring and and um, they all kind of smelled the same to me. So at the time, a lot of uh, the older Chanel's like the Poor Monsieur's and uh, um, I think even Anteus were available in, in drug stores and, and stuff like that. I believe even uh, 19 was available at the drug store for, for a while before Chanel pulled them out. Um, I remember getting into the allures, you know, the sports and, and uh, for the men, the allure sports and the blues and the blues kept me interested for a little while until I, I was looking for something with a little bit more depth. But um, as far as the allures, I think they're probably some of the worst things that Chanel has on their or their counter nowadays. And even, even as a collector, I, I just kind of sold them off. I wasn't interested in um, hanging on to them for whatever reason. Uh, I know they get a lot of hype and attention from young uh, men, but... They just don't do anything for me. I'm way more interested in uh, the older masculines, even the, the modern feminines. Um, just interests me a whole lot more. So that's kind of how I got into, into Chanel. Um, and then I kind of discovered the exclusives, which I think are amazing. Like to me, they're phenomenal. I actually think they're one of you know, not only one of the best uh, designer exclusive ranges, I think they're one of the best ranges in all of perfume. Um, and that's just my opinion. That's just what I enjoy the most from everything that I've tried. Um, so by, you know, by that, I mean kind of uh, their sophistication, their quality, um, the, the materials that they use in their perfumes all seem to be like of the highest quality. Um, I don't find them very mainstream at all. I don't find the brand uh, trend setting or actually, sorry, I do find them, you know, uh, trend setting. I don't find them to follow trends uh, as maybe a little bit more in the last, last few years. Um, but for the most part, I wouldn't say they're followers of the trend. Like the blue line kind of started the whole blue trend. Um, maybe with Gabrielle a little bit, I can see them following this fruity floral thing going on. But for the most part, I think they are unique and they're, they're excellent pieces. Um, you know, especially if you go back the past 20 years, everything prior to that was really, really great stuff. Um, the men's and the women's. So the blues don't really interest me. We'll start with the men's here. I got to start somewhere. So, you know, the blues don't interest me, but they are pretty much what got me into perfume to start with. Uh, I was just handed a, a, a blotter at the, 
department store with blue on it and oh, it didn't draw me at all. I thought it was actually really horrible and I knew nothing about perfume at the time. And I just kept smelling, oh, I had a little bit on my hand and I had a blotter and I just kept smelling my hand the whole day. And, it, 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 it disturbed me kind of to the point where I had to Google Blue de Chanel, like, what is this? And um, it just kind of, the, the first thing I opened, it opened up a note pyramid for me and it, it kind of listed all the, the notes that went into this perfume. And I was just really surprised. Like I thought perfumes were just a general random smell. I didn't know they had like, grapefruit or incense and patchouli and sandalwood in there and I was like wow this is really interesting and uh, I just kept digging deeper and deeper and um, eventually I kind of grew to like it but it wasn't very long before I was just looking for you know the next better thing <laughs> which ended up you know being a cycle and going over and over and over always looking for the next better thing um, yeah, so then I kind of discovered the Poor Monsieurs, which I loved, like both um, the EDT and the EDP, which are very classic, very masculine, very clean. They are somewhat dated. I find the EDT is, is somewhat a little bit more dated. Um, kind of a barber shoppy thing with the spices and the citrus and oak moss, you know, not... I can't imagine a young person wanting to smell like these, but they are classic and they are sophisticated. And that's kind of what I like about them. And, um, and Teus here is very dark and, and um, it's animalic and it's a very strong stuffy perfume. It's got a lot of spices and um, you know, it's got leather and rose and uh, this animalic beeswax that I find, uh, oak moss. So it's a nice, classic take on a Shebra. Um It is very loud and very bold and daring. And that's probably what I love about it. You know, you don't find too many perfumes like this. Um, Ego East for me was a blind buy. They don't carry Ego East in Canada for whatever reason. You know, it could be for the same reason that they didn't carry the um, Poor Monsieur EDT in the US for 50 years i think it's it's finally available now but this was a blind buy for me completely and you know when i loved it off it was love at first scent so it's pretty much a um a very spicy oriental um you got cinnamon and rose um musk and brett musk uh you got some vanilla in the dry down, some sandalwood, very creamy, very masculine as well. Also, you know, somewhat outdated. So you can kind of see this theme with Chanel's masculines and how over the decades, they kind of perceive masculinity and it's every, every generation, they just kind of get, you know, softer and softer you're going from classic Pour Monsieur to very loud and heavy Anteus and um, Ego East to very clean and a very safe Allure Homme and Bleu de Chanel. So it just kind of reminds me of, these two kind of remind me of the modern metrosexual man, uh, very clean, um, you know, I can kind of relate it to skinny jeans and shaved bodies, no body hair, where these are very masculine and would be more of a Tom Selleck, whereas this would be more like a Cristiano Ronaldo wearing this. So and you can see times have definitely changed um, from classic perfumery to modern stuff. Um, let's kind of get into these women's, which I do prefer much more. And here is like, you know, you can't, you can't mention Chanel. I mean, you can't talk about Chanel without mentioning number five, which is a rarity, especially being like, um, let's say a connoisseur or, um, 
and in, a, a perfume enthusiast, we're always looking for something unique and daring and uh, exclusive and rare and hard to find and all that stuff. But here you have um, one of the oldest, one of the best selling perfumes of all time, one of the most popular perfumes of all time. And I gotta say it is easily one of the greatest perfumes of all time. And it's something that I love and adore and appreciate every single time I wear. So, you know, it just kind of doesn't go with that whole enthusiast thing. Um, Cause we are looking for, you know, the next best thing that nobody else is wearing. But here, here is like quite clearly one of the best selling perfumes ever, which I also think is well deserved. But this comes in, um, I do got now every single concentration, I believe. And I don't, you won't see many vintages here. I'm not a vintage hunter. I can't be bothered to look for things on eBay or, or chase after things. So I much prefer, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just lazy that way. But here's one of the oldest Chanel's I have. And this is uh, Eau de Parfum. This is a tester and you can see I've lost my cap. I've lost my atomizer. I thought about replacing this several times, but I won't. I'm going to use this and it is an older bottle. It's got to be at least 10 years old and I kind of use it as an aftershave when I come home. So I'll just, you know, flip the bottle upside down, press down on the straw and I'll get a little bit of uh, fragrance on my hands and I'll just kind of rub my hands together and put some on my neck. So it works for me like that in the after, um, in the evenings because it is quite soapy and quite clean and floral and uh, very heavy on the aldehydes. So it's got this sparklingness to it that um, number five is known for. Uh, the flankers here, low and Eau Premier are a little bit easier to wear. So if you're not big on the aldehydes, um, I would say check these out. They can get a little bit powdery. I know a lot of um, especially men aren't into powdery because powdery kind of relates with uh, feminine perfumes. Powder is an accord that I love. I love, uh, you know, the more accords and nuances to a perfume, I actually appreciate it more just because I find it makes uh, things a little bit more interesting. So um, number five can definitely get a little bit powdery. Here's Gabrielle, which is um, I think one of their most recent releases you know, as far as starting off a line. A Gabrielle's a very modern, um, it is very versatile and it can be, it might be a little bit trendy, but you know, nonetheless, I think it's really well made and I do like it. I do wear it in the summertime. I find it very, uh, very refreshing. It's got this sparkling, crisp, effervescent freshness to it. Um, some fruits, some florals, some ambers. You know, I, I do. I like it a lot, especially in the warmer weather. But what I like even, you know, better than Gabrielle is Coco and its flankers. Here is the Eau de Toilette. Um, the pink juice doesn't scare me. I, I'm... Uh, um, love, you know, I love the, the feminines, the women's perfumes or stuff that's marketed towards women. I think a men can definitely wear these. Um, I don't know, a lot of men are scared off by these, but I was for a long time too, you know, I kind of enjoy them in private, but I just don't give a shit anymore. Like, um, I wear them wherever. So Coco's very big and bold and, uh, I, yeah, I would say it is quite feminine and you know, the first few times I wore it, it was even too loud for me and too femme and I, I was kind of like um, very aware of my surroundings and it did make me feel uncomfortable the first few times, but now I wear it to work confidently. I'll wear it around friends or family and I just don't care, but Coco is all about dry fruits and resins and florals and you know, it's very dark and mysterious. It's very bold. So you don't need a whole lot of cocoa to get you through the day. Um, the Coco EDT might be a little bit easier for uh, a, a man to wear. And um, you could probably get away with wearing this in the uh, 
lighter weather where I'd wear, you know, cocoa for me is just in extremely cold conditions. This you can wear in warmer weather. Uh, what's even easier to wear than those are the cocoa flankers, which are to me a little bit more mainstream and mass appealing, but doesn't make me love them any less. I, I love all of them. Um, actually, I like Coco Mad uh, a lot more than I like the Mademoiselle. For, I don't know what it is. It's just a little bit screechier on me. Um, I like the softness of Coco Mademoiselle, kind of that fruity powderiness going on. It's a little bit waxy and creamy and soft. Um, and it's a subtle, you know, it's, it's got this nice subtlety to it. I, I keep hearing how loud Coco Mademoiselle is or was or used to be in the reviews and um, I don't really find it all that loud. I don't know if it's been touched up or, or toned down a little bit, but uh, I definitely find that it lasts all day long on me. Um, to me, I get, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of fruity. Like I get this kind of strawberry, peachy, um, fruity floral, Thing. It's definitely got a feminine vibe. It's definitely got that that powdery, waxy um, softness going to it. And it does remind me of uh, a lot of these. Remind me of each other, and a lot of them kind of remind me of cosmetics. They've got this this waxy um, makeup bag to them. This this makeup vibe to them. And I love that. It's one of my favorite nuances in all of perfume. Uh, Coco Noir, um, is it noir? Is it more noir? I'm not sure. It, it, it can and it can't be. It wears differently on me a lot of the times. It's very, uh, there's something in this that stands out to me and it almost reminds me of, It's got to be the iris. It just reminds me of um, something. Something in it reminds me of mushrooms. It's got this. Uh, how can I say? Almost like this soft, buttery, earthy rubberiness to it and it's almost like this fungal iris I don't I don't know what uh, how else to explain it but you know it might be the patchouli it might be um, there's florals in here it's it's not much different than regular cocoa um, I think it's a little bit louder and it lasts a little bit better on me uh, I think there's a blueberry note in here for fruit but there's this fungal thing to it. I mean, it doesn't smell like fungus. It kind of, it's more of a feeling than, than um, an actual, like a fungal rotting something. It's just uh, this rubberiness that I actually find in some of the other um, exclusives. I kind of see it in, in 31 Rue Cambone, this fungal quality to it. If it comes to me, I'll, I'll bring it up. Here's the, the latest, um, Let's get into the, ex actually, we'll get into these older ones. Here I got a couple others. I've got um, 19, this is Pudra, which is a gorgeous, you know, nobody does uh, green and, and earthy like, like some of these older Chanel's. Green, earthy, floral, citrus, um, vetiver, like spices, so pudra is obviously a little bit powdery. I think it it kind of highlights the iris and the vetiver note. They may or may not be oak moss in this one. I know there is in the others. There's definitely oak moss in the Cristal. Um, Cristal Overt focuses more on a fresher Cristal, um, specifically the, you know, it's got lemon. It's a very fresh, almost uh, cologne -y perfume just absolutely gorgeous number 19 the classic 19 focusing on iris and again um, the greener notes galbanum um, 
It's got a really nice freshness to it. Oh, just gorgeous. I can definitely pick up like a, a soft leathery vibe to it. Just a, a classic, you know, a lot of these are classics and, and we can only thank for Chanel for hanging on to these and not selling out to um, a bigger draw, you know, things that are more easily marketed or mass appealing. You know, because I don't think they sell a whole lot of these because I, I, I came in one time and I asked for something and I was like, do you have um, number 19 and know the parfum and 100 mil and they're like, you know what, we don't know because nobody ever asks for these, nobody ever buys them. It's more of the modern stuff. So it's actually nice to hear this or to know what's going on and what sells and and what doesn't. Uh, Cristal to me is absolutely gorgeous. I love Cristal, which is a very strange scent, but it might be outdated to some. I mean, if, if you've smelt a lot of things, it, it'll, it'll make sense to you and it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, marketed towards women, I think a man can easily wear this. It's a lot of citrus, um, green rootiness, vetivers, spices, uh, florals. So you can definitely see, you know, the, the, the women's have a lot of the same themes going on. It's, it's that Chanel DNA, um, fruits, florals, creamy sandalwoods, and they're just kind of made in different proportions, different concentrations. Um, you'll see a lot of similarities uh, running throughout these. So this is kind of like the newest line. This is the uh, Lizzo line which uh, came out in three. So two of them are uh, available here in Canada. The third one is not Paris Deauville. Here we've got Paris Venice and Paris Biarritz. Biarritz is, uh, it, it seems to me like a, a take on the classic Eau de Cologne, the very fresh, um, very sophisticated, you know, um, made for the warmer weather. Very elegant. Very citrusy, very um, fizzy, just refreshing, very refreshing. It's probably got that Neroli, lemon, verbena, bergamot theme going on, some spices. Um, Biarritz, or this, sorry, Venice. I think I pref pre prefer Venice over the two of them. I haven't really, I just got these. I haven't been able to wear them out yet properly, but. This is way more waxy and powdery. Um, it's also a little bit rubbery. And I find a little bit more sophisticated than um, Biarritz. Okay, so let's get into the exclusives here. The um, Le Exclusive de Chanel. I've got... Um, a couple of the 75s here. These are the 75 mil bottles. These are all, all Eau de Toilettes. And um, the only place that says Eau de Toilette is on the back of this sticker here. I've got number 22 in Eau de Toilette. I've got uh, Queer de Russie in Eau de Toilette. I've got Coral Mandel in Eau de Toilette and 31 Rue Cambon in Eau de Toilette. And I, I've also got those in some bigger 200 mil bottles, but um, all wonderful perfumes, you know, they're all very sophisticated, they're all very well blended, they're all enjoyable and entertaining. Um, very traditional, you know, number 22 to me, it, it reminds me a lot of um, number five, it, it reminds me somewhat of Boidil, you know, I've got Boidil in, in, in um, Eau de Toilette, there's a, the Eau de Toilette, I've got it in the Eau de Parfum as well, somewhere here we'll get to it, but I've got both and I, I enjoy both, you know, uh, a lot has been said about the reconcentrations of the Les Exclusives, I think a lot it's, um, there's being a, a, a bigger deal made out of them than there needs to be. I think um, 
for the most part, um, for the most part, you know, the EDTs were a little bit better, but I don't think that's the case for all of them. I actually find um, I do prefer the EDP version for some of them, and that's especially for the lighter ones like uh, number 18, Jersey. Um, there's a few other, I think Bella de Speedo. I kind of prefer in the Oda Parfum just because I'm getting better performance uh, from them. And, you know, performance may be an issue for some people uh, always complaining about performance and not being able to smell themselves or longevity. Um, I, for the most part, am able to smell, you know, they are lighter and, 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 and more subtle than a lot of beast mode bro fragrances, but um, that to me is just kind of a statement on their their class and uh, sophistication more than it is uh, a knock on Chanel's performance. Cause you know, they definitely perform, they're just a little bit lighter and um, more sophisticated, you know. So I've got here beige, which is a nice uh, white floral, floral and amber. I've got 22 here, which is another aldehydic floral. Just a gorgeous, I think it's one of like the greatest perfumes of all time. Um, along with number five, along with, you know, I can say that for a bunch of the Chanel's here. I've got 28 La Paza, which is an, an iris based perfume. So it's like definitely all iris. Iris lovers is this is something that you would love. 20, 28 La Paz is like iris after the rain or rootiness or, you know, it's got that powdery accord. Just gorgeous. Bella de Speedo, which is, uh, it's green woods and leather. Kind of reminds me of the springtime green grass. It's got this gorgeous black leather. Uh, note to it. Here's La Pausa Eau de Parfum, which is quite different. La Pausa Eau de Parfum is quite different to me than the Eau de Toilette. While I actually prefer the smell of the Eau de Toilette, um, I get a lot better performance from the Eau de Parfum. Here's Mesia, which is a gorgeous um, violet an iris perfume, kind of uh, this sugary, candied violets. Actually, it's not, it's not overbearingly sweet. It's just oh, so well blended, like all of them. So it's a powdery, candied violets and iris with woods and a leathery dry down is what I find it to be. Kind of um, the inspiration for this was the ballet. It's just kind of the way a ballerina would smell before her recital, you know, with her makeup and whatever it is a ballerina is supposed to smell like. A Jersey, which is a kind of a simple lavender perfume. It's not the most complex, but it is very gorgeous. Um, so Jersey's kind of this texture that was favored by Coco and that's kind of what they try to replicate is um, not only the smell of lavender, but also uh, the texture of this fabric, which I find lavender is also, it is quite, um, it's, it's dry and rough. And that's, you know, this isn't very rough, but it's got this dryness to it. It's like lavender and licorice. Maybe a hay note. All right, so my battery kind of died there, but okay, we're talking about number 18. And I was saying that this is one of my favorites and um, this is one that didn't work for me in EDT. Um, I just wasn't able to perceive it or pick it up. And it was a shame because I always loved it. Like I I'd put a little bit on my hand and I thought every time this is such a gorgeous perfume. 
can see there the juice, the, the, the liquid is white. I can't remember, I'm not quite sure if it was white in Eau de Toilette, but this is one of my favorites. I love number 18. I think it's a, a brilliant perfume and I got a lot of rose from this, which is weird considering um, Chanel is very traditional and they kind of concentrate on uh, a single note in a lot of their perfumes. Like you got iris, you've got lavender, you've got leather in um, Queer de Russie, you've got patchouli in Coral Mandel, you've got, um, you know, there's a couple that aren't really concentrating on one note, like 22's got a lot of everything. Um, Bois Ill is sandalwood, but it's also, um, looking at other things, uh, 31 Rue Cambon is iris and patchouli, but number 18 kind of focuses on, on ambrette. It's this uh, musky, uh, it's a vegetal musk, but more than that, I, I get more of this peppery smoked rose and um, it's just very effervescent and it just develops like nothing else on my skin, um, slightly powdery. And uh, you know, just so sophisticated. And when I wear it, I'm, I think you know, perfume doesn't get more um, more beautiful than this. It's definitely something that I would recommend um, to everybody to try out. Number eighteen, huge, huge, huge fan of eighteen. Uh, not a heavy scent at all. It is very light, and it is um, just a. Uh, a sign of their sophistication. It's not a banger, banger by any means. Um, Bois deal again about that sandalwood, but it's so much more than sandalwood. It's uh, florals and aldehydes, and you know you've got your traditional um, Chanel aldehydes and and white florals and and roses and jasmines. And again, this is another one that reminds me of five. So when I think five, when I wear five or 22 or Bois d'Ile, I just kind of think of the others for, for some reason. So if I'm wearing Bois d'Ile, I think of five and 22. And when I wear five, I think of 22 and Bois d'Ile because they all kind of have this similarity to them. Very cream, creamy, soft, warm, elegant. Boy is one of the newest. Um, I like boy, I'm not, you know, it, it's not something that thrills me out of my pants, but, and it's not something that I'll wear out for the day to work or, or going out. It's more something that I find cozy and relaxing. So after a work day, I might come home and put on boy. And I find that, you know, that theme kind of goes for a lot of these. Um, there are certain ones that, you know, I love and I feel like are must haves for any Chanel collector. Um, that I do wear to work and I would, would wear going out. And then there's a few pieces that I find I don't wanna wear to work. I'd, I'd rather just wear them when I come home and to relax and enjoy by myself. So those would be kind of like, um, you know, jersey is something I'd wear when I come home from work. I wouldn't wear it to work. Uh, Mezia I wear to work. I can wear Mezia to work. 18 I can wear to work or out, wherever. Bois d'Ile I can wear out. Um, La Pausa, you know, I've worn to work a couple of times, but it is very light and, and, and transparent and weightless and minimalist. And um, it's something that I appreciate wearing more just, you know, in the comforts of my own home. Queer de Russie, I, can, I, I wouldn't wear this at home. You know, there's nothing comforting about Queer de Russie. It's a very big, bold, floral leather, um, kind of this soft floral leather, but is very aggressive and kind of sexualized, I find it. And uh, it's not a comforting scent, you know, it's more of a statement maker. And um, I don't mind wearing it to work, even though you know it, it doesn't challenge me, it may challenge more my coworkers. Sycamore, it's not something that I would wear at home. It's more of a work scent for me. Um, so Sycamore is about smoked woods and vetiver with a lot of spices. 
and incense and it's absolutely divine. Um, this is the Eau de Parfum. I've had the Eau de Toilette and for some reason, I don't know what it is, if it was my bottle, but it just didn't work for me and I got rid of it and I got the Eau de Parfum, which I do um, absolutely love. It does have kind of this, this rootiness, slightly pickled, incensey, woody, woodsy, foresty, dry vetiver to it. And you know, it's got this, this tinge of greenness to it. You know, the color of this is almost something that I can smell. It, it, it smells this color. So that's definitely a, you know, a work for me, it's a work or, or going out scent. It's not something that I find. I want to uh, sit at home in my pajamas in comfort. Uh, Cormandel is another one that I, I would wear out and enjoy um, during the day. So it's a earthy, sweet patchouli. Um, by sweet, it's got it's got benzoin and vanilla, and it's got this white chocolate accord to it. It's got a herbal, smoky patchouli. Um, I'd call this an oriental. It's definitely got, you know, the, the benzoin vanilla uh, aspect to it, which can get a, a, a bit powdery, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, a wintertime fragrance, I would say. Might get a little bit too cloying for the summer. 1932, I've got, this here's just another concentration of um, Bois Deal. 1932, um, a fruity floral, a very sharp, musky. It's another one built on uh, Ambre. And this is the Eau de Toilette, which I find the Eau de Parfum to be quite different than this for whatever reason, a little bit more sharper, uh, a little bit more fruity with more pronounced pear note. But I picked this up late after you know the the, the reconcentrations were, were put into effect, and it was actually the last bottle that the boutique had of a de Twilight, so I picked this up. And I do like this uh, strictly for the summertime. I think it's a little bit too light and too fresh for you know fall or winter, but it's a nice uh, fruity floral for for the warmer weather. Oh, very peppery. It, it kind of reminds me of 31 Rue Cambone. Um, light, you know. It's got that iris jasmine thing going on. Maybe some incense. Very nice. Um, I think I've kind of shown everything. Here is, this is actually the last one that I'm going to show. And this is the number five body oil, which I didn't really think much of it when I when I discovered this. And it comes in a, um, this is a limited edition, which they release from time to time. And it is, it comes in the uh, 200 mil uh, Les Exclusives style bottle without the magnetic cap. This is just kind of a click. And I didn't really think much of it until I smelt it and I was blown away and I was like, this is more of a, 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 re, a different concentration of number five than the body oil. The body, the whole body oil kind of turned me off. I'm not into um, makeup or creams and lotions and shampoos and all that sort of thing. So yeah, the body oil threw me off. And, but when I smelt it, I was like, oh my God, this is um, number, like a different version of number five. Uh, it is a little bit softer and more elegant and light, and this to me is definitely a at-home comfort scent in my PJs, um, cozying up to a good book, and I uh, absolutely adore it. Just like all other versions of number five. So that's just kind of been now my um, Chanel collection. Um, I hope to see some comments, you know, um, 
let me know if you guys, men, will wear uh, the, the women's marketed perfumes. Women, do you wear anything from the men's ranges? Let me know what you think of the Les Exclusives um, or anything else that you wanna wanna say or state or ask. Look forward to hearing from you guys and we will talk to you again soon.